first of all, let me say um, the number of people that have been on the free math website, the free web uh, course um, this last week, since last week, I think I marked 70 assignments. So first of all, let me give, um, you know, so I was really happy about that. But what I want to do tonight is I'm going to give you a list of concepts that are on the exam that you must know. They're almost, these concepts are, are almost every single exam. So that when you, when you go to the Schoology, when you go to the free website, when you're practicing, you know exactly what to study, okay? Now remember, there are 45 questions on the exam, okay? Half is about 23. So you need about 26 to 28 problems. Well, I'm about to give you 15 that's on every single exam. Okay, um, I did start typing on the screen, but let me write it again. Let me make it a little bit bigger. So that I'm gonna start there. Must know math concepts on the exam. Oops. must know, you must know these concepts, okay? So the first of all, uh, area and perimeter of a rectangle. Oops, that's too big. Did I write it down or? Um... I'm not, that's up to you. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have the screenshots and you have the video, but if I were you, I probably would write it down just because these are, these, these, type these questions that I'm giving you on every single exam almost, everyone I've seen, okay? Now, when you talk about area perimeter rectangle, also um, to be able to solve, um, if you're given the area or the per perimeter, okay? And almost on every single exam, okay? Also, the area and circumference of a circle. Find a radius or diameter of a circle when given the area or circumference, guaranteed. Okay, so area and perimeter of a rectangle, when given area perimeter solve for the unknown, area and circumference of a circle, find a radius or diameter of a circle when given the area of circumference, and compute the perimeter and area of composite shapes. They are almost always on your exam. Almost always on your exam. These three are almost on every single exam. I haven't seen a practice test or a real exam that, that, haven't, that these weren't on. Okay, so remember, if you got to answer 26 problems, but you know the 15, the 18, that's definitely on every single exam, it kind of gives you a head start. So um, let me know when I can erase this first three, and then we're going to move on to the next three that I want you to be able to do. Uh, okay, you know what problem again, I realize I have very difficult, it, 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 it's the word problem. When they give you mm -hmm. a word problem, you have to... to um, figure it out. Mm -hmm. So but, but what you have to remember is we use word problems every day. So what happens is, first of all, we want to remove the fear. So one of the things you can do to remove the fear is go on a, on a math site and you got CK12 and you got Khan Academy and you got my quizzes that give you enormous amount of word problems. So even if you're struggling with them right now, the more you work with them, you'll see the type of question they could possibly ask you and be ready for it. Because remember, I mean, this is the, this is the, which this is what you got to remember. Hold on for one second. That's my son. He he's called me twice in a row. Let me hold on. Okay, so these are guaranteed. You will have you're gonna have these. 
Okay, so let me let me let me save that. Let me clear this out the way. The next thing that's guaranteed on your exam, okay, guaranteed. Hold on. Get my pencil. Using scale factors. Basically, you need to know ratio and proportions. Guaranteed on your exam. Guaranteed. The next thing that, uh, that has to do with proportions and ratios is percent problems. Guaranteed on every single exam, every single exam. Okay, so what I'm trying to give you is those questions that are guaranteed. Okay, so these are the ones that have to do with ratio and proportions because we should know that a percent is really a ratio. 85% is 85 out of 100 or 85 to 100. So um, I don't know if you are familiar with that. Now, um, the next thing I want you to be familiar with, and, and I've seen a lot of people get this wrong on the practice test, which I was surprised, and on the real exam. So when we talk about linear equations, let me get my, my uh, text here. When we talk about linear equations, the first thing you have to know how to do, and this, and this is another one on every single exam. You have to be able to locate points on the coordinate plane. That's on every single exam. And when I see somebody score 143 or 144, and this is one of the problems they get wrong, I was like, wow. Okay, you have to be able to do the slope. And so many people have problems with the slope, but you got just got to practice enough until you know it. We, it's no rush. You have to be able to determine the slope from a line, from a graph, from an equation or a table. Um, if you've been here long enough, I showed you how to do it on the calculator um, very quickly, but you have to know how to locate points on the coordinate plane. You have to be able to find a slope of a graph, equation or table. You have to be able to find the determine the equation of a line. Okay, from a graph. Gu Oops, guaranteed on your exam. Guaranteed on your exam. You have to be able to determine the equation of a line from a point in the slope. Guaranteed on your exam. You have to be able to determine an equation of a line. Uh, determine the equation of a line of a parallel and perpendicular line. Guaranteed on your exam. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Okay, you have to be able to determine the slope and or the equation of a line from two points, guarantee. So now let's look at this. So I gave you area of a rectangle, area circumference of circle, area and a perimeter of a composite shape. That's three problems. Locate points in the coordinate plane. That's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So already we got nine questions. We'll, we almost have a quarter of the exam right now. Determine the slope and or equation from two points. Guarantee you're going to have it. Okay, let me save that. If you're writing this down, let me know. I am taking pictures of it. I will send it to you. We'll see the screenshots. 
But if you're writing it down before, um, and you would just want me to pause for a second so you can write it all down, just let me know. Uh, I rather when you do the screenshot, I write it down because I realize I'm taking too long. <laughs> okay, okay. Um. Now, now I'm, 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 the ones I'm going to give you first are the ones guaranteed on the exam that you're going to see. Okay, so let me save this. Let me erase it. Now, what are you going to have to do with formulas? Okay, again, these are guaranteed with formulas. Okay, you're going to have to be able to do volume. Now, I can't tell you what shape they're going to give you, but you have to be familiar with all of them. So we have the cyl a cylinder. We have a pyramid. We have a sphere. Um, a rectangular prism. And I believe that's it. You're going to have to use your formula for volume, guaranteed. Volume or surface area. Let me say volume or surface area. Um, usually, um, you're going to have to do volume at least two problems. They usually give you a rectangular prism, a cylinder, and usually a sphere. Got to be ready for volume. Um, one of the other ones you can use your, that you have to, you're going to have to use your uh, formulas for is Pythagorean theorem. I don't know if I spelled that right. <laughs> I don't know why I always get it wrong. Let me see. Let me make sure. I don't know how to spell it, but I know the Pythagorean is not spelled like that. <laughs> <laughs> let me make sure. Let me see. Let me make sure. Ooh. Yeah, I had it right. Pythagorean theorem. Um, again, you must know this formula. You must know the forty for area and circumference of a circle. Even though we already covered it, covered it, this is what you're going to have to use your formulas for. Must know. Must know again. So that's nine. You're going to have two volume problems. That's ten, eleven. You're going to have a guaranteed Pythagorean theorem problem. That's twelve. And I already count as areas uh, area circumference of a circle. So that's 12 problems already. Already. Okay. Now, oops, didn't mean to erase all of that. Also, let's make sure we talk about our algebra. Okay. You're going to have to be able to, and listen, this is very important. Um, I talked to a couple people today who took their exam. Um, Two people were students of mine. The other two were recommended to me. They all missed by one or two points. Can you imagine studying, studying, and you miss by one or two points? So we want to alleviate that. You're going to have to create, they say linear, but I'm going to call it algebraic expressions. Okay? You're going to have to do algebraic expressions. You're going to have to be able to evaluate an algebraic expression. Now, the algebraic expression and evaluating algebraic expression, that's about three problems. So now we have the 15. So make sure you know how to create an algebraic expression and how to evaluate an algebraic expression. Definitely guaranteed. Guaranteed. Okay, let me see that. Oh, I'm still writing. Okay. So what we're going, so what I'm going to do is for the next, this is what I decided to do, and I just decided like right before we started class. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna have this list, and what we're going to do for the next two to three weeks on Mondays is I'm gonna make sure you know how to do the guarantee problems. So you know going into the test, you 15 to 18 good. You only got to figure out five more problems. I mean, five, five, six, seven, eight more problems to be able to pass the test. Okay? Evaluate an algebraic expression. So we're going to do them by hand, and we're going to use the calculator. Both. We're going to use both. Okay? I'm ready. Okay. Thank you. Let me save it. Let me erase it. 
The next two are kind of related. Um, so multiply binomials and um, solve one variable quadratic equations. Let me put a little space in there. Okay. So that's about 17. And I'm going to write these down. And when I send you your, um, when I send you the video tonight and the screenshots of tonight, I'm going to lift, I'm going to have all of these listed in the email. So what you can do is you can go on a school to site, you can use your Kaplan book, you can use whatever resource you have, and you can start practicing these. And then once you have something down, then you can move on to the next thing. So I try to put them together, the ones um, that are related. Okay. Um, and then the last thing that's guaranteed on your exam are these two. And, he, and they, these are more a little bit more difficult. Matter of fact, let me just go here. And you know what? I can just go like this. And I can go inequalities and system of equations. Okay. These are the guaranteed ones. So tonight we're gonna to continue where we left off before, but I wanna make sure everybody knows how to first um, multiply binomials, and then we're gonna practice solving quadratic equations. Oh, Mr. Tizzy, these are the hardest ones. But that's where we were, that's where we were. So I wanna make sure before we move on, because today out of the two people um, that missed by one or two points, both of them missed a coordinate plane and multiplying binomials. They would have, they, those are the two, one of the two, not, uh, let me not say the easiest, but ones you should be able to do. And both of those individuals would have passed today. So I wanna make sure I cover them. So these are the must know math concepts, all right? So let me clear this and let me open up the, uh, I thought I had it open, um, quadratic equations, let me find it. Oh, I mean, in fact, I had another sheet open. Um, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Quadratic. There we go. Okay, let me download it. And again, I'm gonna include this um, this worksheet um, in the email. Did it open up? Maybe because I didn't download it yet. Hmm. Oh, my, my computer must have reset. It must have restarted, up, up, updated. Okay. Multiplying binomials. So first of all, I want to look at like number four because um, I want to show you a nice note. One's like number four first, okay? Um, R plus one times R minus three, okay? Um, now, well, as I demonstrated before, you would do this. You got to understand the distributive property. So first I would do R times R, which is R squared. Then I'm going to do R times minus three. All you're doing is putting those three together, minus three R. Then you're going to do one times R. Remember, anything times one is itself. So I'm just going to do plus R. I don't need the one. And then plus one minus three. You have like terms here. So you got R squared minus two R minus three. So what you have to remember is when you do R times R, that these are really exponents with the same base. You add the exponents and you get R squared. But you should be able to do a problem like this. This is considered an easy problem. Now, that's not the ones they're going to give you an exam. They're going to give you one like number six, which is not that much harder, but you need to be able to do it. Okay. So again, what is 3P times P? Anybody know? Three, three P squared. Three P squared. What's three P times minus one? 40. Three P minus one? That's a positive. Negative, negative three P. Negative three P. So the first thing you have to recognize 
is that when you're multiplying, you're multiplying the coefficients first. So three times minus one is minus three. And then you just bring along the variable with you because we only got one variable in one of the terms. So it's minus three P. Um, then we're gonna multiply minus three times P and you also get what? Minus three P. Minus three P. And then minus three times negative one. When you multiply two plus negatives, one. your answer is plus what? one. Plus one. Not plus one. Positive. Not plus one. Positive three. Uh, Positive plus three. three. Plus three. So then what you have to recognize is you have two like terms. And what I mean by like terms is that they have the same variable. And when they have the same variable, if you're trying to combine them, okay, you just look at their coefficients. So minus three and minus three. So minus three and minus three is what? Can anybody tell me? Yeah, no. Minus six. Minus, minus six. six. Minus so remember, five. so the, the, the common mistake that people make is they say, oh, same sign, positive. No, it's same sign is positive when you're multiplying or dividing. When right. you're combining, you, it's like adding or subtracting. So minus three is minus six. So we got three P squared minus six P plus three. This would be your final answer. What I want you to do is when I send you this worksheet, now, if you've already done this from last week on the worksheet I gave you, that's fine. But what you need to do is it's fine to come to class and it's fine to understand it while we're going over class. It's fine to understand it what you get home. But if you don't practice doing it yourself, that's where the issues come in. Because when you when I'm here, here on Monday, when I'm going over it, you're like, yeah, I got it. <laughs> I got it. And then when you get home, you're like, what did he do? I don't understand. So you have to practice. So I'm going to send you this sheet that will have the answers. So the sheet I had last night didn't have, last time I didn't have the answer. This I had the answer, so you can check it. Yes. Um, I understand the three pieces. Send the line. Same time you are. Yeah, I'll see that. But um, I know that the, um, the greatest number, if it was like a greatest number, you take that sign. But I just don't get where that negative come from. Okay, good. All right. So let me clear the screen real quick and let me turn to a blank page. So first of all, what I want you to do is understand that you cannot allow yourself to not pass this GD because you don't know how to use the calculator. Point blank. If you get something wrong, a sign number wrong on this GD exam, that's because you didn't put enough time in using the calculator. And I'm gonna show you how to do it by hand, but then I'm gonna show you with the calculator. So everything you do, do it by hand, then go turn right back around. If you can use your calculator, use your calculator. So let me open up my calculator because this is the mistakes, the common mistakes I see and people are missing by one and two points are simple mistakes. Signs, um, location of points on a coordinate plane, um, a very uh, problems that are considered why is my calculator not opening here? Okay, I might have to do this by hand. I might not be able to open the calculator because it's not. Uh, okay, I'm going to do this by hand tonight and then uh, I'm very upset already. Anyway, so let's do, I'm going to pick any three numbers. So I'm going to say seven and three. And I'm going to change the signs. So I'm going to do seven minus three. I'm going to do minus seven plus three. And I'm going to do minus seven minus three. Okay, now, first of all, you got to recognize that this is combining like terms. Why? Because I don't see any parentheses. I am not multiplying or dividing here. So that's the first thing you got to understand that those rules, same sign as positive, is only for multiplication or division. So here, now, there are rules. Same sign. Oops, same sign. Same sign, add. Add the digits. And then the sign and keep the sign. Okay. So I didn't so remember, we're not taking into account the signs. All we're looking at first, are they the same? So the seven and three have the same sign. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we're going to add them. What's seven plus three? Ten. 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 That's easy, right? Okay. Seven minus three. Do they have the same sign? 
No, if they have a different sign, and I'm sorry, a uh, different sign, you subtract the two values. And usually when you subtract, just take the largest minus the smallest. It so doesn't matter. Four. Say subtract the two values, mm -hmm. subtract values. And then you're going to take the sign the of the largest digit. Oh. Okay. So it's just four? So seven minus three is four. And then seven is your largest digit. And that's positive. So your answer is positive four. And that's, okay. with, that's with addition and subtraction? I don't call it addition and subtraction. Um, I call it combining sign numbers. The reason why is because if you look at seven minus three, that's you consider that subtraction problem, right? Yes. Minus seven plus three looks like an addition problem, right? But watch this. What if I turn this around and I say three minus seven? Now look, it's a subtraction problem. <laughs> so it's addition or subtraction. Which one is it? So I think that, so I don't call it addition or subtraction. If you look at most books, that's what they that's what they call it. I say combining sign numbers. Okay. So now minus seven plus three, do they have the same sign? No. No. So seven minus three is four. Now we look at the largest digit, which is seven. What's the sign of the seven? Negative. So it's negative four. Mm -hmm. Okay, minus seven, minus three. Do they have the same sign? No. Yes, yes. Yes. So we add them. What's seven plus three? Um, ten. ten. And we're going to keep the sign. Minus Negative ten. 10. Now, I wish I had my calculator open. Um, I, I don't know what's going on with my computer this evening. I'm just having some problems tonight. But... You got to know your sign numbers. But if you have your calculator right now, put uh -huh. those in your calculator. You practice the sign numbers until you can do it. Listen, the only time that you cannot use your calculator is for the first five. So if you let sign numbers, if sign numbers are the reason why you fail your GD, that means you didn't practice enough on your calculator. And that's point blank. Well, because these sign numbers is going to be in the first five, aren't they? Um, you maybe you use the calculator with these with these sign numbers. You usually your first, first five. five, your first five is undefined. Let me write that down. Hold on. So let me save this. So let me explain the first five, and I and I've got this right in my book, because you got to start strong. The first five, okay, undefined. Got to know what undefined is, okay? That means you can't divide by zero or you can't have a negative square root. Almost, they never use the negative square root problem. They all, I haven't seen it on a real test in like since 2014. So your denominator can't be zero, okay? Most people get this problem wrong. Undefined, it's in the, so you look at the first section, first five under in my book, it's right there. I'm giving you every type of problem they can give you, similar type. Um, absolute value or the distance between numbers on a number line. Okay. Oops, I forgot the M there. Most people get that wrong. It's one of the easiest problems on your exam. Absolute value or the distance between numbers on a number line. Converting mixed numbers. Oh yeah, that's a that's that was one of the ones I could. To improper fractions, guaranteed on your exam. Improper fractions to mixed numbers, because you gotta you gotta go you gotta be able to do both ways. Multiplying and dividing of decimals. decimals and then square square roots cubed cubes and cube roots 
They're going to give you five questions from these areas. Listen, that's how you start strong, getting those five right. So if you look in that section in my ebook, I tell you almost every one they're going to give you, every which way you can get. The only one I didn't give you a, a whole lot of examples was uh, uh, this is between two numbers, but I put a good example there. Okay, so that's the first five. So understand what we just did. So I just gave you all the concepts. I gave you 18 and I gave you the first five. That's 23 questions right there. That's half your exam right there. Yes. You didn't put percentage. The what? Percent. Say that one, time, one more time. Percent, percent. I you can't hear you. What happened? I said you didn't put percent. Well, no, that's not part of the first five, though. Oh, okay. oh, 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 I did miss one. You are right. You are right. I did miss one. I am sorry. You are right. Um, uh, fractions, decimals, and percents in order. Say so you got to put fractions, decimal, percents in order. You're right. You're right. I apologize. You are right. Yes, yes, yes. I did forget one. Those Can are your first day. Use the calculator for that one. No, the first five. No, the first five you cannot use um, your calculator for. Okay, you cannot use your calculator for. So, okay, so let's go back to our multiplying binomials. And so many people have issues with multiplying binomials. And there's two different ways you're going to have to use it. First of all, they're going to explicitly ask you to multiply binomials. And then they, another problem, when they ask you to solve a quadratic equation, all your multiple choice are going to be in binomials. So when, if you know how to multiply binomials, that's going to be two questions. So I want to make sure I do cover that. So let me go back to that worksheet. And I'm going to try a difficult one. Let's see if I can find a difficult one. Yes, number 11. Number 11, number 11. So I I'm sorry, um, it's a little warm. You see, I got the, uh, I mean, cold in my house. You see, I got the long sleeve shirt on. It's freezing in my house right now. Um, and my brain is frozen. I can't remember how to do number 11. I need somebody to walk me through how to do number 11. Um, hold on, let me let me increase the zoom first. Let me so I can make it nice and big so everybody can see it nice and clearly. Nice and big, lovely, nice and big. Now <laughs> I'm cold, my brain is frozen. I can't remember how to do this problem. How do I multiply in parentheses 4n plus 4 times 5n minus 8 times the quantity of 5n minus 8? Can somebody tell me what to do? It doesn't matter who, just tell me what I would do. We're going to start with 4n multiplied by 5n. So multiply 4n 20, by 5n. And what do we 20 get? 20n. 20n? Nope. Square. 20n squared. So if you notice, 4 times 5 is 20. 20. And then n times n is n squared. Is n squared. Does everybody understand that? Yes. 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 Now, so, so now, you already answered the first part. I need someone else to tell me what I'm going to multiply next. The four, the um, four and eight. I don't, I don't have a four and an eight. Tell me what four. two things I'm going to multiply next. Four okay. n and minus eight. Four n and minus eight. That's you, the attention to detail, even when you say them out loud. That's why people make those small mistakes. I need to multiply 4n times minus 8. What is 4 times 8? 4 times minus 8? Negative 32. Negative 32. And we're going to bring that in along with us. OK? So now, understand what happens when you multiply binomials. So understand what's happening. The, my, first, my first parentheses has two terms. My second parentheses has two terms. Two times two is four. So in total, the max amount of terms I should have, I should have four terms when I'm finished. Or oh, my next step, I should have four terms. Okay, now what am I multiplying next? The four in the five N. Four times five N. What is four times five N? 
Plus 20 in? What kind of 20 in? Positive. Positive. So what happens is the mistake that I saw people make, somebody sent me a picture. So for example, they put 20 in here. Oh boy. But they didn't put plus or minus. So when they oh. went to the next step, they added the 32 and the 20 and had negative 52. So remember, even though you don't put positive in front of a term when it's by itself, when you have more than one term, you need to put the sign unless it's the and so you need to put the plus 20 in. Does everybody understand that? Yes. Okay, good. What's my next step? Um, four, four times eight. Nope, four times positive, negative, negative eight. Negative eight. Four times negative eight. So you're not looking at these, no, you're not looking at these terms no longer as five n minus eight. It's five n as one term and then minus eight is the other term. So a lot of people still look at these like subtraction, even though it is subtraction, I want you to look at it as, as that number is minus eight or negative eight. Okay, what is four times negative eight? Negative 32. Negative 32. Now, if you notice, remember I told you we're multiplying binomials. So you should have four terms, one, two, three, four terms. So now, are there any like terms in this problem? Yes. Negative 32 and plus 20n. Negative 32n and plus 20n. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down the 20n squared. I'm going to bring down my minus 32. And then I have to combine what is minus 32 plus 20. That's exactly what we just did. So they, they do they have the same sign? Yes. Yeah. No, different yes. signs. They're different no, signs. They're different signs. What's 32 minus 20? Negative 12. It's 12. And then the largest digit is 32. So, and that has a negative. So it's negative 12. And then remember, we only look at the coefficients when we combine the like terms. So we have to keep that variable. We don't lose the variable. That's another common mistake I saw people do. They would combine this negative 12 and this negative 32. You cannot forget your n. The math, the computation parts, involves the two coefficients, the negative 32 and a positive 20. But they have, they are like terms and have the variable n. This is your final answer. Guaranteed on your exam. You must know how to multiply binomials. Must. You must. You must. Okay. Guaranteed problem on your exam. Okay. Now, so for example, but the, are they are they always going to give it to you? Oh, they, oh Mr. Tensey, I can't understand word problems. Oh my God, I don't know how to do it. Yes, you do. If you keep saying you can't do word problems, you won't be able to do word problems. Do you say, oh, I can't pay my electric and let you and let you get your electric cut off and stay off and you got kids? No, you find a way to get that electric on, don't you? <laughs> yes. Am I right or wrong? Yeah. Right. So the first thing you got to understand is stop saying you can't. Stop it. Don't even put it in your vocabulary. In my classes, I charge everybody 50 cents every time I say I can't. Every, every single time. I tell everybody they got to bring their quarters. If you say I can't, I'm charging you. And then I usually use that money to have a pizza party at the end of the year. <laughs> I don't keep it. <laughs> but you got to be able to multiply by numbers. So let's do a problem together. So I'm going to give you an easy one first. And then you're going to send me the answers in the, multi uh, in the chat. And then I'm going to give you a more difficult problem next. So this is the first problem. Okay. And I'm going to give you, I'm only going to give you two minutes to solve this. Now, it should take you less than a minute because I've showed you a small trick to solve these, these problems. But I'm going to give you, matter of fact, I'm going I'm to split this. I'm going to give you a minute and a half. Now, if you can't do this problem in a minute and a half, when I send you these worksheets tonight, that means you need to work on them today, tomorrow, till you got them down. And it's going to be no excuses. So matter of fact... Matter of fact, 
I need, I, when I send you a worksheet, I need you to send me a picture of the work you're doing. Because, to, now listen, l- I told you, I take this stuff personally. I had two people today miss by one and two points. And both of them multiplying binomials, they didn't get it. Both of them missed points on the coordinate plane. I, I couldn't believe it. So we're going to limit the, eliminate those mistakes. How are we going to eliminate those mistakes? We're going to practice, practice, practice. So this has, I think, 20 problems. It may, it may, have, it may have more than that. So I'm going to start the time. I want you to do number 16 and send me your answer in the chat. So now, I know you can't put X squared. So I want you to put X squared like this. X carrot 2. So carrot on the calculator means uh, uh, um, exponent. So that's a, so for x squared, I want you to write x caret 2. So if I was writing x squared plus 2x plus 5, when, I, when you're in the chat, you're going to say x caret 2 plus 2x plus 5. Everybody got me? All right, let me start mm-hmm. this timer. That's right. That's right. Pressure bus pipes. <laughs> I'm going to put the pressure on you because I, because I don't like hearing that bad news. I want people to pass. Now I'm not going to be able to sleep all night. <laughs> all right, start. I gave you one minute and 30 seconds. Send me your answer in the chat. Oh, I see about, oh, I see a bunch of them. Okay. You, Darlene, you are correct. Wow. All <laughs> and send the answer directly to me. Make sure you don't send it to everybody. X minus four times X minus seven. Tia, you're correct. Very good, very good. So both of you answered within 30 seconds, so that's good. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people tonight. Eight people. Okay, good. So I'm a seeing this worksheet. I need you to work on this worksheet. Send me a picture. <laughs> oh, somebody was trying to get in and couldn't get in. Um, let me send send it to him. Uh, let me stay with my email. Wow, that was a fast minute and a half, wasn't it? Shannon, almost correct. You forgot your variable for your second term. And then once you have your variable for your second term, you must combine like terms. Yeah, right. Uh, okay, so, so. So redo that answer and send it to me again. Okay. And then once I send this email, they'll be able to get on. There we go. All right. Oh, let's go over this problem. So three people sent me answers. Who's still working? Who need a couple more seconds? Well, I, I think I gotta like learnies. So say that one know, more time. 
I got to I got to learn some. So I got to do some more of these problems. OK, so I'm going to send this worksheet to you and I'm going to make sure that I do have them on this, the school site. But this is this, okay. this is especially for guaranteed problems. You got to be able to do so. First of all, what am I going to multiply first? Can the anybody tell me? And seven? No. So remember, so it's no guessing. So I'm going to take this first term and I'm going to multiply it by everything in the second parentheses. So x times x. What's x times x? x squared. x squared. x squared. Then I'm going to multiply x times minus 7. What's minus 7 times x? Negative 7x. Negative 7x. I'm going to change my color here. Now. Now I'm going to multiply my second term in the first parentheses by everything in the second parentheses. So minus four times X gives you what? What's minus four times X? What's minus four times X? What is minus, minus four, four times X? Minus four X. Minus four X. Okay, so I just got a text message. That people are having problems hearing me. That I'm going in and out. Am I, can anybody, can everybody hear me clearly? Yeah, right. it's fine. Okay, so minus seven X minus four X. And then what's the last thing we're going to multiply together? Negative four times seven. Negative Not seven. Negative four, negative four times negative seven. When you multiply in two negatives, they become a what? Positive. So positive 28. So Shannon, this is where you made your small mistake here. You got all of this right. All of this was right. But this part right here, remember, these are like terms. So you have to combine them. So we bring down, oops, not, let me not use black because I use black at the bottom. Let me use blue again. X squared. What's minus 7X minus 4X? Negative 7X minus 4X is 11X. Yep, negative 11X. Yep. And then you bring down your 28. This would be your final answer. X squared. Minus 11x plus 28. Especially for the ones that's guaranteed that's going to be an exam, you got to make sure you know how to do it. So, um, so that was that one. Now, I'm going to go to a more difficult problem. Now, I that I was the most difficult one. No, well, really, this is easy. I'm going to show you why. Watch this. I'm going to show you a little trick. The coefficient on both of these are one. Okay. Yeah, that's where I get confused when there's not a, a, num a number there. So when there's no number there, it's a one. Why? Eight times one is eight. 10 times one is 10. X times one is X. Well, one times X is one X, which is X. So when you don't see a coefficient, it's a one. When you don't see a number in front of the variable, your coefficient is one. Okay. Now watch this. When your coefficient is one, I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna give you a small trick. Watch this. Minus four, minus seven. When you combine them, you get a negative 11. When you multiply them, you get a positive 28. This is your second term, this is your third term. X squared minus 11X plus 28, bam. <laughs> when your coefficient of both your variables are one, Negative. Nice, easy trick. Combine them. That gives you your coefficient of your middle term, minus 11x. So it doesn't matter what you get. Watch this. I'm just going to make these up. x minus 5, x plus 3. Minus 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Minus 5 times 3 is negative 15. So x squared minus 2x minus 15. Bam. Done. But first, I want you to be able to do it the first way first so you can understand that second way, okay? So that's how you would 
easily do if your coefficient is one. Now, let me give you a more difficult problem. Now, when I say more difficult problem, it's really not more difficult. It's, it's doing the same steps. So it's really not more difficult. But this is considered on your exam. When you see this, this is considered an easy problem. This is considered a, diff a, a, a difficulty of medium. Oh, okay, so I'm going to set the timer for two minutes. I'm going to give you 30 more seconds. Start in now. And send me your answer in the chat. Evelyn, did you ever send me your email? Make sure you put your email in the chat for me so I have it. Okay, I was driving, sorry. Oh, you sure was. I remember I saw you. You were. <laughs> <laughs> Eight B minus one times five B minus five. And when you have your answer, send it to me in the chat. James, I apologize. I didn't get your message to Lee. So um, thank you for joining. That's right. I'm here, brother. So right now we're multiplying binomials. Okay, that's what I was working on. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mr. Jesse, I was sitting here working on that. Okay, well, you got one right here, and you still have one minute left. Oh, no, one four minute. seconds. <laughs> no, you don't have enough time to finish, but just see if you go ahead and do it. Now, no one sent me an answer yet, so this must be real difficult. So I'm going to extend it one more minute. All right, cool. Nobody has sent me a response yet. See, pressure bus pipes. Oh. See? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, this would be. Shannon, that is incorrect. Hold on, hold on. Darlene, that is incorrect. Give me a second. All right, one more, one more, one more thing to do. One more minute. I gave one more minute. Okay. Uh, and this is why you have to practice. You have to practice. So you get a concept down, then you move on. Okay. Now, I can say when I went on to the school G site, I marked, uh, let me say, probably 100 different quizzes this week. So let me give everybody a hand who logged on to school G and did practice problems. I'm going to give you a hand and congratulate you. Um, and that's what you got to put the work in. Uh, I'm sending you my answer now. Uh, Oh, Darlene, you are so, so close. So, so close. Let's see. All right, here's here my answer right here. Uh, Tia, you are correct. Let me see here. All right, put it in chat, right, Mr. Tinsley? Yeah, put it in the chat. Tap in chat, won't. And then we're going to go over it. All right, I'm seeing you my answer now, which is. Okay. 40B squared, 40B 
How would you square it on this laptop? Uh, so, so for forty B squared, put it like this. Put a carrot in front of the two. Okay. Square, and then I'm gonna hit the negative forty five B. Forty five B. And then I'm gonna hit a positive. And I'm here five. Okay, let's see what you got. Let's see what you got. Let's see if you're right. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Hit Press this. enter. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. That was Darlene's answer. Okay, James, Fatia, both of y'all got it correct. So let's go through it. Yeah, I finally got it. Right. Good. So now you've been working pretty hard, James. You had some issues with that recently. That's good. So what am I going to multiply first? A to B and five B. Eight B and five B. What is eight times five? Forty B squared. Forty. What's B times B? B squared. B squared. So eight B times five B is forty B squared. Okay, now, what am I going to multiply next? Negative uh, one. No. One times. Eight B, negative five. Eight B times negative five. Eight B times negative five. What is eight times negative five? Negative B. Negative, negative 40 negative B. 40 and bring that B along with you. So negative 40 B. What do I, do I have to multiply now? One times. Not one. Ne neg negative one times uh, 5B. Negative one times 5B. What is negative one times five? It'll be a negative 5B. Negative five and bring that B along with you. Negative 5B. And what's the last thing we need to multiply? Negative one times negative five. Negative one times negative five. When you multiply two negatives, the answer is always positive. what? Positive. And what's one times five? Five. Five. Do we have any like terms? Yes. What are the like terms? Negative 40B, negative 56. No, that's a B, not 56. No, B. That's a B. Uh, 5B. So, so we bring down the 40 B squared and what's negative 40 minus five. We're only looking at the coefficients. That's how you combine like terms. You only look at the coefficients. So what's negative 40 and negative five? The same what's sign my, means you add when you- uh, Same sign means you add. So what's 40 and that'll, five? It'll be 40, 45 B. And you five. keep the negative, right? Uh, uh, yes. Yep. And then bring down your B. So negative 45B, and then you bring down your plus 5. So your final answer should have been 40B squared minus 45B plus 5. Okay? That's what you should have. Now, I'm going to show you. Now, again, I'm going to send you this worksheet. Okay. okay. So that means I'm going to send every, I'm gonna send everybody who's in this session tonight. I'm going to send this worksheet. If it has the answers. So as you scroll down, the answers are going to be there. You're going to be the checking your, yourself. And I want you to work them until you got them all right. Can we do another one though? You want to do one more? Let's do one more. Let's yeah. do one more. Let's do one more. Number 17, five X plus six times eight X minus four. Let me try to find. Let's see for a second. Hold on. Where is it? Hold on for one second. Let me do something. Let me open up some. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put it back on the on the screen in a second. Just give me a couple seconds so I can show you a practice problem that you may see. Hold on for one second. Where is it? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? All right, hold on. Bam. And then where was it? There we go. There we go. That's the one we want to do. 
right there. And then I'm gonna show you something how it may not it may not be directly like that, but it will be something we have to multiply by now. So I'm gonna show you an example that you have to be ready for. <laughs> So number 17? Number 17. Number 17. Come on, Jeremy. Where and it's called, what is it called? Multiplying? Binomials. Binomials. Mm -hmm. But it basically is distributed property. Okay. So binomial means two. So by means two, that means you, you're multiplying okay. two terms by another two terms. That's all that means. Why can't I find the problem I'm looking for? Unbelievable. I hope this is the one. There we go, right there. That's the one I'm looking for right there. Perfect. That's the one I'm looking for right there. Number 17, send me your answer in the chat. So today is Monday. I should see everybody's response working on this worksheet by at least Wednesday. <laughs> Make sure you got it. Practice, practice, practice. You'll be able to watch the video again um, to prepare yourself. Got about 30 seconds left. Patia, you are correct. Very good. Very good. You are correct. Mm -hmm. And let me just say, when you use this worksheet, the first time you do it, uh, Darlene, you are correct. Well, I'm I sound like you. a I, I sound like a talk show host, don't I? You are correct. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll be choking around. <laughs> Let's see, Shannon. Oh, you so close, so close, so close, so close. Okay, I'm sending you mine now. Okay. Let me see. Remember, Shannon, use those arrows. So make sure you look at that first term and you're multiplying by the first term in the second parentheses. And then multiply that first term by the second term in the parentheses. You're missing your first, you're missing your first term. And remember, you're multiplying everything. So as you're drawing them arrows, you are using multiplication first. And then when you have like terms, you're combining. And we're going to show you in a minute. Did, did the alarm just go off? I think I heard yeah. it. Maybe. I think I stopped it, but I didn't even think about it. So let's go over this problem. Um, so what am I multiplying first? How I look. Oh my. 5x and 8x. Uh, oh, James, you are so close, so close, so close, so close. All right. You, so what's 5x times 8x? Um, uh, what's that, 40? X 40 what? 40 X squared. Perfect. So if you got 40 X squared, you got the first step right. So remember, when you're multiplying binomials, there's four steps, five steps. So you're going to multiply four things, and then you're going to combine like terms. What is the next thing we're going to um, multiply? 20, uh, uh, 5 X times uh, 4. Nope. Negative. negative. 5 X times negative 4. And what's that? Negative uh, 20. Negative 20 what? X. X. Negative 20x. Okay, what, what are we going to multiply next? 
Six times eight. Six times, not six times eight, six times. Eight X. Six times eight X. What's six times eight X? Uh, 40. 40. 48 x. 48 x. And then what's the last thing we're going to multiply? Positive 6 times negative 4. Positive 6 times minus 4. What is 6 times minus 4? Plus 2. 27, right? Nope. Nope. Negative 24. Negative, negative 24. 24. Yeah. So what happened was, Shannon, you combined them 6 minus 4. Remember, we're multiplying all the terms first. <laughs> I got all that. I got all that right on mine. Right there. You got all you got all that right. But your last step, James, I'm gonna show you what you did wrong. Let me turn to red. We're gonna break. Do we have any like terms? Yes, yeah. the uh negative, negative 20x and, and positive 48x. So we're gonna bring down the 40x squared. We're gonna bring down the minus 24. And what is minus 20 plus 48? 18x. That's where you went wrong. 48 uh, minus 20 is 28. Oh, I did it in my head. Okay. So, listen, and that's what I mean. My, my calculator is not working this evening. I don't know why. I yeah, paid all my bills. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know why it's not working. I paid for a, a, a forever lifetime membership to my calculator. But again, if, listen, and this is what I'm talking about. Watch this. I'm going to show you how you would use your calculator on this problem. You can't use it to multiply the x's. Oh, my calculator just popped up. Oh, I'm so glad. Watch this. So for what you can use it for is to multiply the terms. So 5 times 8, now you know your coefficient is 40x squared. 5 times minus 4. 5 times minus 4 is minus 20. So now you have your second term. 6 times 8 is 48. Now you have your third term. You just got to remember to bring your X. And then six times minus four gives you 24. So now you, you used your calculator to get all your coefficients. Now, what do you do when you want to combine like terms? Once you recognize that they both have the same variable X, I'm looking at minus 20 plus 48. So minus 20 plus 48. Then you got your coefficient of your middle term, 28x. Use your calculator as much as you can to make this easy for you. How do you spell binomials? Binomials. <laughs> binomials. Yeah, that's what I was trying to figure out. Look at the top. Where? So, mo On the left to corner. Brian, binomials. There we go, right there. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Even bigger than that. Oh, I see what she's saying. Okay, we my right corner. Okay. I don't know why it's not that. multiplying. This is multiplying by numbers. Now, so that's how you do it explicitly. That's the computation. That's how you do it. That's you're going to have a problem like that, right? Let me show you how they would put it on your exam. Now, watch this. I'm going to show you because I really need you to understand what I'm trying to say. How Chris Tucker say, do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Oh, let me stop. I, 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 I swear one time I thought I was going to be a comedian. I went down to the laugh house and uh, nobody laughed. <laughs> so now, this is not telling you to multiply binomial. What it's telling you to do is factor completely. But if you look at the multiple choice, there each multiple choice is multiplying binomials. So instead of you having to factor this quadratic equation, would it take you five to eight minutes if you work and perfect multiplying binomials, this then becomes a much easier problem. So then all you need to do is do this, x times 3x. 3x squared. Yeah. x times 1 is just x. Minus 6 times minus, minus 6 times 3x is minus 18x. And then minus 6 times plus 1 is minus 6. When I combine these two terms, I get minus 17x. 3x squared minus 17x minus 6. Is that what we need? No. So it is not a. So I get rid of a. Boom. I go to my next one. 3x squared plus 2x minus 9x 
minus six. When I combine my two terms, I get three X squared minus seven X minus six. Is that what we need? No, so it's not B. Go to your third term, go to your third multiple choice. Three X squared minus two X plus nine X minus six. We have like terms here. So we bring down a three X squared plus seven X minus six. Ding, 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 ding. Yes, ding. yes. Okay. So okay. instead of having to factor this quadratic equation, which will take you five minutes, if you know how to multiply binomials, this becomes an easy problem. Yeah. So that's two more problems. Now, the last thing I want to do, I know it's already 7-Eleven, but the last thing I want to show you is because this really bothered me today because people got multiplying binomials and uh, points on a coordinate plane. Okay, so I want to make sure everybody understands how to find a point on the coordinate plane. It is the easiest problem on your exam. Because it's easy, people think, oh, I don't have to practice. And then you make that simple mistake. So let me let me get that. Let me find that now. And I know what we went past the time like I always do. Somebody sent me an email and said, Mr. Tinsley, you always go past the time, but we don't mind. <laughs> but some people, some people might have a schedule. So let me find it. Study guide right here. Let me find one with the points. And again, th this, and again, these are problems on every single exam. This one right here. Okay. Now, so what I want to do is I want to, I want you to be able to identify these three points. Okay. So remember what I want to show you is, and again, this is an ordered pair. It's called an ordered pair. Oops. That's not big enough. Ordered pair. Uh, let me make it 36. Ordered pair. Ordered. Ordered means in order. So X before Y. Pair meaning two. So every ordered pair is X comma Y. Every single point that you have on a coordinate plane, the X is always first, then your Y. So when you're doing your problem, say ordered pair, X first, Y. Keep saying it until you know it so you don't get any of these wrong. Now, let's look at point, let's look at point J. Can somebody tell me the ordered pair for point J? Is it, is it O, X before Y, right? Mm hmm So it would be negative four comma zero? No. Negative four and one. one. And one. Negative four and one. And one, okay, okay. Okay, how about K? Now, most people miss this problem because they miss K. What is K? What's the ordered pair for K? Okay, Three seven. and zero. Three and zero. Yeah. So zero X first. first. Yes. Zero and three. Yes, Darlene. Your X first. So zero yes, comma right. three. Your right. X is always first. So one of the things I show in my class is just come down to the X axis first. Then go your minus four. Then go over to your Y. Come down your X axis first. It's directly on the Y. Go up to you. So that's how I would say. So now let's look do that last one. What's L? L will be uh, yeah, oh. X first. It'll so be three. three. Zero and three. Uh, three nope. and zero. No, three nope. comma three. negative two. Three oh, comma yeah. negative two. So I'm going to send you two worksheets. I'm going to send you another worksheet so you can practice order pair. You are not going to be able to say that when you was in Mr. Tinsley class that you ain't passed that math exam because I'm going to give you every possible ingredient for you to pass. You just got to put the work in to practice. So I'm going to send you two worksheets. One to practice multiplying binomials. The other one is identifying a point on the coordinate plane. 
If I do not see work from you this week, I will not let you in class next Monday. No, I'm only kidding. I will. I'll That's not fair. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Hey, hold me accountable, Mr. Tinsley. No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. But seriously, if you want this, I need you to practice. So I'm going to send you those two things. I'm going to send you the video. I'm going to send you um, the screenshots. And I'm going to send you two worksheets, one for multiplying binomials and one for identifying points on the coordinate plane. Yes, Darlene. Okay, um, I think one of the um, my uh, problem is I don't know the like today you teach us the, the X and the Y, mm -hmm. but there's one that where you have to plot the Y first. And then no, the never, ever, this ever, ever, ever. Never, ever, never, ever, in any kind of weather. <laughs> Ordered pair. X is always first. Okay. On the coordinate plane, your X is always first. The, the Y first. No. no, X is always first. Put it out your mind. Okay. X is all, that's what an order pair means. X is first, then Y. But the starting point, would be y. The no, your your x. first point is always x. I don't care if I use this point here. So what you're going to do is you're going to come down to your x. My x is five. So in parentheses five comma. Then I'm going over to my y. Okay. My y is five. If I'm down here, I'm gonna come up to my x minus three minus over to my y negative five. So what you have to recognize is this. Let me clear it and make sure. This is your x-axis. This is your y-axis. So this is why I'm gonna send you the worksheet so you have enough to practice. These are two guaranteed problems on your exam. They on every single GD, guaranteed. Every problem that we're gonna go over the next two weeks are from the ones I know that's on exam, and we're going to practice enough. So you're going to be able to go in there and have 18, you know, you got them in the pocket. They're going to be yeah. easy money. Okay. But you got to practice. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Everybody have a wonderful night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Thank Bye. you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. But, Yes. I want you to schedule a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, when will you think? Next week? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, first practice. Yeah, first practice and then schedule one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Okay, okay, I will. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Thank you You're very welcome. much. Okay, have a good night. You too. Bye. Mr. Crosby, you still there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. My, I was listening. I was. I, I wanted to get in so bad, man. But I, I had my no. fingers tied, man. I know. I, I see you tomorrow. Fingers, okay. I had my hands tied. All right, my brother. Thanks, man. Take it easy. You're welcome. Okay. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm.